Video game music is kind of crazy, in the sense that it's not exactly like anything else. I mean, when a composer is tasked with scoring a game like Super Metroid, they gotta be like, alright, when the player is in the underground depths of Brinstar, what the hell should that sound like? How can I help build this world the player is exploring with some fire melodies? Not only that, but I gotta make something that can loop without getting annoying, and has a selection of sounds that fit the overall atmosphere of the game. The end result is this. This shit, this shit is hard. Uh. Sam is Sam is shooting everywhere. Blah. Sam is grandma in a rocking chair. Grandma! The thing about video game music, though, is that its application isn't even just limited to building an atmosphere. There's music made for title screens, music made for menu screens, music that changes depending on what the player is doing, music that lets the player know, dude, you're fucked. Music that maybe only plays in a safe place, or music that's used in the most unexpected ways to surprise and affect the shit out of the player. There is a seemingly limitless variety of ways you can use music in video games, but by showcasing some specific examples, with this video, I hope to raise awareness and discussion for effective video game music usage, but <laughs> I also just want to celebrate those sweet-ass bangers all hot boys and gamer girls are so lovingly familiar with. I've separated my examples into four unique scrategories. World building, shit's happening, player association, and surprise, motherfucker. So world building is that hot shit I talked about like a minute ago with Super Metroid. This that shit that's there to give the player even more insight and understanding of the atmosphere they're in. I'm talking Silent Hill 2 soundscapes, Donkey Kong Country aquatic ambience, underneath a rotting pizza fucking fire. Oh shit, okay. Yo, I got purple pants, cause I'm running all around. I got my name from Rippin' Fat Cloud. The world building stuff isn't even just limited to original music either. Licensed music like in the Fallout or Grand Theft Auto series can be just as effective at pulling you into that universe. Like, when I'm playing Vice City and I'm doing some naughty shit to some Laura Branigan, I don't feel like Jakey anymore. I feel like Scarface, like, Mom, look, I know you named me Jakey Christ, and that's my mating name and all, but, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm Scarface now. Shit's happening is that shit that plays that lets you know what kind of business you're getting into. Battle music, boss battle music, shit that plays when you get caught in Metal Gear Solid, shit that plays when you finally figured out how to stab some giants in Shadow of the Colossus, really, anything that plays to let the player know, alright baby chicken, something is happening, and here's some extra motivation to keep going. And then you have games that have music that's kinda like a two for one combo family pack. Stuff that does some effective world building and motivates the player at the same time. Like, take this track from the first Hotline Miami game. The style and sounds not only let me know what kind of universe this game takes place in, but it makes me want to fight people. Player association, as I've brilliantly labeled it, <laughs> is stuff that's kind of like shit's happening, but a little bit more specific and organic. So if you've played Left 4 Dead, you know that when you hear this shit, Oh man, it's about to get spooktacular. Or maybe when you hear this... You know a pissed off tank is on his way to murder Sui, you and your friends. These tracks are the same throughout all the campaigns in the game, but instead of just motivating the player, they're used more like a tool. A way of communicating to the player without putting any annoying text on the screen. The early Resident Evil games do a similar thing as well. Because the music that plays in the save rooms is always going to be the same, it is a immediate ginormous relief to enter a room in Code Veronica and be treated to this tight little piece. Yo, what up, fam? It's your boy Jakey in the save room. <laughs> Y'all already know what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Killed a man, now he dead. Shot him in the fucking head. Then I got some old bananas, made some damn banana bread. <gasps> because of the nature of it, video game music is already gonna stick with you because you've spent so much dang time in that game. But when the music is associated with an emotion connected to the gameplay, whoo! 
That's that really powerful shit. Surprise motherfucker is the stuff that is largely unexplored in most big budget titles. Moments in games where music is used in an unconventional way that surprises the player for a unique emotional response. But because of the nature of these surprise motherfucker moments, if you haven't played Metal Gear Solid 3, Red Dead Redemption, or Splinter Cell Conviction, maybe stop watching this video and just quickly go play those games. Red Dead is only like 30 hours, you'll be fine. Alright, going back to the video in 3, 2, 1. Jesus. Thank God those people are gone. <laughs> So in Snake Eater, there's this moment where you're climbing this giant ass ladder. The game needs to put you in the mountains to advance the story and shit, but instead of just using a cutscene or whatever, Kojima was like, nah man, let's throw a ladder in there. Maybe he's a wrestling fan, I don't fucking know. But it ends up being this really memorable moment because some way up the ladder, this lady just starts singing the theme song. It's fucking amazing. It's an effective moment that reminds the player what this journey is all about and gets you fucking jacked. It doesn't feel like the game is taking any control away, but instead it's like the hand of God, in this case Kojima, just reaching down and being like, Right on, Snake Boy. Keep it up. Red Dead Redemption has a similar moment when you first ride into Mexico. It's still an open world game at this point. I mean, you can stop riding your horse and go shoot someone in the dick whenever you want, but as you ride into the beautiful country, this Jose Gonzalez track just starts playing. Step in front of a runaway train Just to feel alive it's a really special moment to remind the player of John Marston's quest and to reflect on the journey so far. It's, it's fucking fantastic. And there's also surprising moments with music and video games that aren't necessarily quiet moments like these two examples. There's this really intense part in Splinter Cell Conviction when Sam finally finds out what the fuck happened to his daughter. He starts raging. And while this is going on, DJ Shadow's building steam with a grain of salt slowly starts creeping up in the background. Sam! What? have to listen to me. What's done is done. When the game switches back to gameplay, this song keeps playing and during the sequence the player has infinite mark and executes so they can just stroll through enemies like a total pissed off dad to this awesome song choice. It's fucking awesome. I also use that song on my Marth video if you... If you, want, if you want to go watch that, <laughs> it's got like 50k views, it's whatever. Now these are just a few examples, I mean I didn't cover all of the applications of video game music, but what I'm trying to say is just use that shit. At least to developers, I mean, you're probably not a developer, maybe, maybe you'll go make a game now, that'd be sick, but music is an insanely valuable tool, especially when creating a video game. I mean, I think there's a reason other than nostalgia that when I hear my brother play Dire Dire Docks on the piano, I feel like I'm about to turn into a puddle of piss and tears. I don't know why there's piss, but, you know, it's, an, it's a big emotional response. <laughs> if you're like me and you've spent so much time playing video Video games, the music isn't really just music anymore. It's something intangible that has been stapled to your identity as a reminder of what you love to do. At least that's how I feel. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'd appreciate links to any of your favorite video game bangers on Twitter. I'm gonna leave you with a favorite of mine. This is By the Wall from Machinarium. Dog bless.